Hi everyone, my name is Stacy Hansen and I'm an occupational therapist with Early Childhood Cares. This is part of our video series about picky eating and today we'll be talking about oral motor considerations. Early Childhood Cares serves Lane County children birth to five with developmental delays and disabilities. If you have concerns about your child's development, we invite you to call our front desk at 541-346-2578. As we go through this oral motor considerations PowerPoint, if you have any questions at all, please reach out to your primary service provider and we'll, um, we will do our best to help and support you and your child with picky eating and anything related to, uh, to what's talked about today. We're here to help. So an outline for today's PowerPoint will first describe what oral motor is, um, a, a timeline of oral motor skills, what to look for when, um, when assessing oral motor skills. We um, will also talk about interventions and, um, and then we'll talk about the importance of stability during feeding and the difference between gagging versus choking. Okay, so first we'll describe what oral motor is and we'll break it into two parts. Oral refers to the oral structures such as the lips, teeth, tongue, hard and soft palate, jaw and cheeks. And motor refers to a movement. So the movement of these structures. Working on oral motor skills will help improve awareness, coordination, strength and endurance of the lips, mouth, jaw, and cheeks. Decreased oral motor skills may be because of a lack of strength or sensory issues. Sensory issues may include difficulty accepting student, certain food textures, smells, or certain temperatures. Some children who have low muscle tone in their body may have um, may have low muscle tone in their um, their oral structures and as well and it's important to remember that we have a lot of of small and little facial muscles working on oral motor skills will help in feeding development and foods that take more endurance and strength such as chewing chewier meats fruits and vegetables Often kids will have more difficulty with these foods because it does require um, more advanced oral motor skills and strength and coordination. So here we have a timeline of oral motor skills. Um, I do want to add that it's okay if your child is within these months, um, but has not met these milestones yet. It's important to remember that each child is on their own unique path. And if you do have concerns, please reach out to your support coordinator and we will help you. So we start here at four to six months. I do want to add that um, by about six months, children are more in control of their eating. Before six months, eating is more reflexive. And after six months, um, eating, eating is a learned behavior. And so children are, are, are learning to eat. And so it really is important to, um, to offer family meals where children are able to see their adults eating, peers or siblings eating. And it's giving them a lot of information about what they can be doing because they're learning. So four to six months, here we will see protrusion and retraction of the tongue. So a tongue moving forward and backward. And we may see this when they're anticipating a spoon. 10 to 12 months, we can see a child clean their lower lip with their teeth. We'll also see here more active lip and cheek movement during chewing. 
13 to 15 months, a child is able to maintain continuous suck during cup drinking. 16 to 18 months, um, a 16 to 18 month year old will have good control of liquid and be able to take a controlled bite from a cookie or pretzel. We'll also see here a reduction of the tongue protrusion during swallowing. And again, that tongue protrusion is the tongue coming forward. 19 to 24 months, um, able to use their tongue to clean their lips, maybe if they have some pudding or applesauce on their lips, can drink from a straw, can chew with their lips closed, and can chew meats completely. 25 to 36 months, we will see a mature swallow and a circular rotary chew pattern. So a circular rotary chew pattern is a, um, is a chew pattern that is more in a circular motion, motion and it's the chew pattern that um, is a ma mature pattern that we use as adults. Before this, we see typically um, munching food and um, moving forward and backward. And so around 25 to 36 months, we'll see more of this mature chew pattern. And really by 36 months, a child has an adult-like motor plan for feeding. But what will continue to develop is their strength and stability. Okay, so moving on, what to look for. These are a few things that we as occupational therapists look for when we are doing a feeding evaluation. The first is tongue lateralization. As you can see in the picture here, this child is able to move their tongue to the side to lick the lollipop. Lateralization um, means to the side and so is a child able to um, move their tongue laterally? Next is managing different consistencies. An example of this is if a child is able to manage something like Cheerios with their applesauce. Applesauce is a more liquidy and thicker consistency while a Cheerio is small and uh, a firm and hard consistency. So are they able to manage two different consistencies at the same time? Next is chew pattern. And we talked about this, that at about 36 months, a child will have a, a rotary chew pattern developed potentially. Next is lip closure. Is a child able to close their lips um, around a cup when they're drinking from a cup? Um, are they able to close their lips around a feeding utensils? Um, are they able to chew their foods with their lips closed while they're chewing? And we see this at about 19 to 24 months. Lastly, chewing rate. We typically like to see one chew per second a chew rate that is faster or slower than this may indicate a weak chew. Okay, oral motor interventions. This is the bulk of the PowerPoint and what I think will be most useful to you and your, your family and your child. So um, something you may wanna do is just, if you're on your phone taking a, uh, your phone or your um, computer taking a screenshot of this and maybe um, using it to reference later. And as we go through some of these things, it may be helpful to think about your child and um, something that I say or that you read here, picking one or two things that sounds like something that you could try at home or that you think your child might enjoy. 
So these are this is a long list of activities and there's a whole lot more that that you can do, but just picking one or two things to try, I think might um, might be useful. So the first bullet point I have is a mirror and using a mirror is really helpful to provide some visual feedback for the child. You can see in the picture at the top, um, a child is looking at themselves in the mirror and excuse me and if you are um if you're having them do um certain activities maybe blowing a kiss or um licking um licking the the top of a yogurt or making a silly face it can be fun to do it in the mirror and it also gives them information so maybe they're making um maybe they are I'm trying to make a fishy face, but it's pretty difficult and using a mirror might be more helpful. Okay, some activities that really target the tongue are um, sticking the tongue out, moving your tongue side to side, seeing if you can touch your tongue all the way up to your nose or all the way down to your chin, using your tongue to lick, lip, sorry, lick all around your lips. And the adult can do these things and have a child copy. You can also use, um, if you have a puppet or a paper bag and you wanna make a puppet out of that, um, doing some of these different activities with, um, with a puppet or a paper bag can be fun too. Um, practicing licking envelopes, licking popsicles, and licking the lid of a yogurt. Next, these are some activities that target the jaw. Opening really wide and saying ah, or making a silly sound. Closing your mouth tight and saying mmm, or another sound that's preferred. Um, we already talked about copying with a puppet or a paper bag and making any sort of silly faces, whether they wanna make their own silly face in the mirror or you want to, they make a silly face and you copy what they're doing or vice versa. Next is um, activities targeting the lips, blowing raspberries, <clears throat> making a pucker sound and smacking repeatedly, <clears throat> blowing kisses, pressing your lips together, blowing bubbles. Blowing bubbles is a great activity to target rounding of the lips and also helps with breath support. Blowing bubbles is a difficult activity. And one way that you can, um, can start by practicing blowing bubbles is starting with an already formed bubble off the wand until um, until they have enough control to blow through the wand. Other activities include blowing whistles, blowing cotton balls or feathers or ping pong balls across the table or the floor, maybe even making it into a race. Um, you can also use a, a straw to blow uh, the ping pong ball or the cotton ball across the table or the floor to add um, another level of complexity. Something else I like to do is having a tissue paper in front of a child's face and practicing blowing the tissue paper and seeing if the tissue paper or the Kleenex can dance around as, as we blow. Next is activities targeting the cheeks. An idea is making a puffer fish face. So that's blowing inside to inflate the cheeks, making a fishy face, using straws and thicker liquids such as um, drinking from smoothies, milkshakes, pudding, applesauce. Dr drinking with thicker consistencies will be more of a workout to our facial muscles and require more strength. 
We talked about straw before. I just want to add that straws also help targeting lip closure. And these activities that we're talking about, they all really help to improve strength, coordination, awareness, and many of them breath support. Next, we have sensory. And here are some activities to um, provide more input to the, the, um, the face and the oral structures. Using an electric toothbrush, um, it can be beneficial to help wake up the muscles inside of the mouth. Using something like a Z-Vibe, um, sometimes we use them in sessions and um, these also are electric and provide a, a vibration to a child's um, mouth, both inside and outside the mouth. And another idea is um, using a chewy, something like um, any of the like chewy necklaces or bracelets or the chewy, um, the chewy objects. And next, tongue lateralization. So moving tongue from side to side. Um, some ideas are licking peanut butter off the end of a spoon. So if you have peanut butter on the spoon and you put um, it to the side in the mouth, can a child use their tongue to move it to the side to get the peanut butter off? Maybe moving a raisin or M&M to different parts of the mouth with their tongue moving a lollipop from side to side with the tongue and licking a lollipop placed on the side of the mouth. Lastly, an awareness or an activity to target body awareness is playing Simon Says. Um, Simon Says, touch your nose. Simon Says, touch your chin. Or maybe just simply touching, you know, wh where's your nose? Where's your cheeks? And they can use their the mirror, and you can show um, you can show where your nose is and where your chin is. Just really grading it to where your um, where your child is. Next, we'll talk about stability. It's really important for children's bodies to be stable during meal times, if possible. Eating involves postural muscles, the oral and facial muscles, and arm and hand muscles. So it includes, or it involves our, our whole body. So we need to have postural control in order to sit and provide a base of support for the smaller muscles in the jaw and the cheeks. So we're able to chew and swallow our foods. So it's really is important to sit with support during mealtimes and snacks. I have here 90, 90, 90. And what I mean by this is sitting and um, doing our best to sit at a 90 degree angle at our ankles, our hips, and our knees. And um, foot support is important as well and will help at that 90 degree angle. So um, as you can see in this picture, these children's feet are dangling. And this is very common. Um, you know, our children are, are growing and we don't always have little, little chairs and little tables. And um, something that can be helpful to use as foot support can be um, something like putting a diaper box underneath their feet so their feet can rest on there or using a footstool or um, taping um, phone books together or, um, or using a TheraBand and tying it to the, the two front legs of the chair. So a child can either rest their feet on the band or can move their legs if, um, for children who, who need movement. And we, at the office, we have TheraBands and we also, um, we may have items to use as foot support, such as um, taping the, the phone books together. So if you're interested in this, please reach out to, um, to your provider at Early Childhood Cares. And lastly, 
when our body is stable at the table, it makes us more likely to take a risk and try something new. Lastly, we'll talk about the difference between gagging versus choking. Choking is when our airway is blocked and we are not able to breathe. Gagging is a sensory response. It's protective and it helps us protect our airway. Gagging may lead to vomiting. It's important to remember that when a child is gagging, they are still able to breathe. While being with a child who is gagging is very, um, can be very upsetting and scary, I, um, I offer the advice of doing your best to remain as calm as possible, hoping that, um, that it's comforting to know that they're still able to breathe when they're gagging. So this concludes the, the PowerPoint on oral motor considerations. If you listened to anything today and you had any questions, um, please reach out to your support coordinator so we can, we can better help you. I hope that the picky eating series has helped. I hope that you were able to find maybe one or two strategies um, in, the in the interventions that you can use to work on these oral motor skills with your, uh, with your child. And thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day.